good evening and welcome to tonight's episode of Realities, A Moment with Susie. Hope everyone's had a lovely week. Now we've come to another episode and we've come to another topic. On tonight's episode of um, Realities, being that it's September, and September is the month for breast cancer awareness, we're going to do the show on breast cancer awareness. Tonight with me I have two wonderful guests. I have beside me here Gloria. Gloria is a survivor of breast cancer and she's been kind enough to come and talk to us about her experience of going through breast cancer. I also have Demola Deshino. Hi Demola. And Demola is part of a charity that raises money for breast cancer too. So guys, thank you so much for coming on the show for this really important topic. Now, as we all know, there's loads of cancer illnesses out there. There's so many different ones. Tonight we're going to be focusing on breast cancer because September is the um, awareness month for breast cancer. <laughs> breast cancer is something that can affect whoever, whenever, however. You know, it's one of those infections, illnesses, sorry, not infection, illnesses that um, people never know whether they're going to get it or not. So I think it's something that it, it that is good that people get involved because one way or the other, we're touched by it, be it a relative, a friend, you know, somehow or the other, cancer has a way of creeping into our lives. What I'm going to do tonight is, I'm going to start with, do you know what, I'm going to start with you, Demola. Because, and the reason why I say that is because when Gloria's talking about her experience, you know, it's going to go quiet in your end, and I want to make sure that you're with us all the time. <laughs> So do me a favour, you guys are having this charity to, mm. you know, for breast cancer on the 24th of September. 20th. On 20th of September. I'm sure I've got another event on the 24th. I definitely have. But yes, on the 20th of September. Could you mm. tell us a bit about okay. your event, please? So just a little point of correction. Okay. Um, so I'm part of a club called the Champions Club, which is a group of college friends that started this out about 15 years ago. And one of the things we do is we do some bits of charity every year. Every year we pick a topic and then we do something about it. Oh, you it. pick different topics yeah, we every do, we year? Oh, okay. So um, this year we decided to do something for the ladies. So we did a bit of research and um, it came back that, okay, guys, do you know what? If you want to do anything for us, the thing that we would like you to do would be to talk about or to, to raise some awareness yeah. around breast cancer. And that's important. It's not just raising funds, but also raising awareness. Yeah. So, we, and, and this is within our community rather than the wider, the larger, wider community. community yeah. So we kind of had to put our thinking hats on and decide, okay, how do we get the message, simple message, but powerful? How do we get that message out to um, our community? Um, we realize that there are lots of different channels of communication out there, but the message doesn't seem to get down to the real, it doesn't cascade down to the level where we want it to cascade to. Yeah. So there is still a level of um, ignorance, that's a strong word, but lack of awareness. Can I ask you something? Yes. Is it that there is ignorance, <coughs> or is it that people don't want to think that it could happen to them? So it's something that everybody is aware of because like we even with the kids in secondary school now, mm. they're having the, the female um, students are having their injections mm. to do with cervix cancer and it's always on the TV, mm. you know. So is it that people are not aware of it or people don't want to talk about it because, you know, it, one of those, it's not me. Mm. It, it's, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a combination of both yeah. and a few other factors as well. Um, but the alarming thing is, so for me, what did it for me was, we work with breakthrough breast cancer, okay, okay yeah. and the commitment that we've made is that we're going to raise a minimum of five thousand pounds for them. Wow. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's what started yeah. all this. And I was sitting down with um, one of the ladies from Breakthrough Breast Cancer, and she, she looked me straight in there and said to me, "Do you realise that one thousand women die every month from breast cancer?" All over the world. No, or just in that's the just UK. the UK. Wow. That's that just the UK. Wow. That's one thousand. That's one thousand ladies a month. There are UK's probably got six, 
67, 70 million people, okay? And we think that there are in between, between two to three million Africans in the UK. If not more. If not more. <laughs> if not more. So if you look at that from a figures perspective, the statistics yeah. then tells you how many of that 1,000 every month are actually and, African. And also, quite um, a low percentage, but men do suffer from breast yeah, cancer yeah, as well, even yep. though it yep. is a low percentage, isn't yes. it? And that's something that is hardly ever spoken about. Of course. Hardly, I think, more mm. awareness is put on female breast cancer, yeah. forgetting about the men mm. that do go through it too. Yeah. Mm. And so the first thing, so the, the first shocker was 1,000 people, 1,000 ladies are dying every month yeah. in the UK alone. And if you do the maths, then it means probably a few hundreds out of that, or you know, the early, the, the you know, the, the, the hundred plus of those yeah. are going to be African. Wow. So that's one bit. Then the second thing she said to me, which I kind of knew at the back of my mind, but I was kind of thinking, well, maybe they've made a lot, but there is no cure for breast cancer. It's as simple as that. So this is the reason why the yeah. message is early detection. Because if it's detected yeah. early, then it can be yeah. arrested, it can yeah. be subdued, mm -hmm. you can take, go through treatment, and you know, Gloria will share all that yeah. with us. Yeah, Gloria will. Yes. Yeah. And, and so the amazing thing is that people are dying, lots of people are dying, because they're not aware of the message of early detection, so. or like you said, because they're not facing... Not wanted, yeah. 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 And so there's a whole raft of conversations that need to be had around that area to yeah. enlighten and to give confidence to our, to our community and give them a way forward. So there's so many unanswered questions. Do you know what, talking to you right now, and what has just gone straight through my mm. mind is, maybe it should be incorporated in health education at school. Maybe that information needs to be incorporated mm -hmm. because that's where you catch them. Once those, you know, once the kids hit puberty, when it comes to breast cancer, you know, that information needs to be part of the curriculum, so... Mm, that is true. Yeah. There is the argument that breast cancer, the statistics tell us that breast cancer affects people over the age of 40, actually say over the, more people over the age of 50 yeah. than it does the younger ones. But so they still need to be looked after. They do, but the problem yeah. is, so with everything, it's always about the cost, isn't it? So the government yeah, will tell you, I agree with you that, there. you know, what is the benefit of spending that amount of money yeah. at that age? when they could spend it elsewhere. So well, there will be lots decided, of them, so. They've decided to put it into cervix, um, cervical cancer, haven't mm -hmm. they? Mm -hmm. You know, my daughter, I've just signed a letter mm -hmm. for her to have that injection. But you know what, before I'm going, Demol, a big thank you for that. And before I come over to Gloria, I'm going to say to people, this is a live show. If you've got any information that you would like to add to the conversation, or you would like to ask Demola or Gloria any questions, the phone number is going to be scrolled across the screen. Please feel free to ring in. Now, Gloria, to you. Okay. Now, I'm going to say, before I start, you reminded um, me of something <coughs> just before we came on air. No, I have no, not to that. say it. No, no, no. no. Right. What I'm going to say, listen, no, what I'm going to no. say is, it's quite interesting that you're sitting beside me mm -hmm. for this show, bearing in mind that our friendship actually started oh, at the breastfeeding oh, okay. clinic. Yeah. No, but that's it's fine. quite, that's how we met, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. That how is, many years ago now? 14? Yeah, the kids are 14, 14 now, now, aren't they? they? Yeah. 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 And um, we were really close. Yeah. You know, we've been very close. And then mm -hmm. Gloria, um, she mm -hmm. moved away. So we were talking on the phone. And then mm -hmm. I think I remember. We were talking on the phone, we were friends on Facebook, so we were in constant contact, but Birthday we were actually birthed, that's it. Parties. Then I had my daughter's party and Gloria came down, and I didn't really see much of you at the party, because I was all Business. over the place, wasn't I? And then, a few days after the party, or a few weeks after the party, Gloria called me, and she said, um, Susie, do you know what, I've got something to tell you that I didn't tell you. And I was like, what's that? And she was like, I've just been through breast cancer. And I was like, but hold on a sec, Gloria. How comes you did not tell me all this time? Right, I'm coming to your house. Do you remember? Yeah, and she's yeah, like, yeah. she's like, no, no, you can't come now. I was like, right, when can I come to your house? When can I, when can I come to your house? And I think I went a few days later, you were free. Because, you, you know, in spite of what you went through, you were going through the normal things of life. Do you know what? Can we start with, how did you detect 
that you had breast cancer? Um, how did I detect it? Brushing my teeth in the bathroom. Your teeth? Just after the New Year's. Come back from, you know, having a, a good time. And I was brushing my teeth and my hand just went... Hmm. And then I felt the lump and thought, oh my gosh. And it went from there, really. Something told me to just put my hand there. And Can there was a lump. Before this time, had you been checking your breasts? Um, I thought that I had, because through my work, I actually went and um, did some training on... Yeah. It was training, it was called um, Train the Trainer. So I learned how to do all that breast examination and everything, yeah. so that within my job, I could train people and teach people how to check their self. So I thought yeah. I was fine. So, you know, you have your shower and you feel that you've checked yourself. Um, there was some stuff like in the media about, you know, mammograms and yeah. stuff like that. So I thought, right, I'm doing my checks and everything like that. And then um, that New Year's, um, I found that lump. So obviously, I hadn't been checking, checking that great, and I didn't have that much there going on. Some people have got quite big boobs. You might not be able to see it exactly. So um, that's where. Jamal's face, bless him. Yeah, yeah. That's where that started from. Yeah. Um, and then. So, so you found that lump. Yes. Was it painful? Was it just there? It was just there, and I thought, oh, because thinking back from like the breastfeeding, having the children, you do have lumps. Yeah. Yeah, you do. You do have lumps and bumps and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. Yeah, it's okay. So you have. Yeah. So it's like. I'm so is it natural to have lumps? Would you say? In a well, sense? sometimes because I'm sure I'd spoken to the um, midwife before yeah. at one stage, thinking back now, and there was a lump there, and they said, "No, oh, no, don't be silly. It's, it's a milk, milk glands. Yeah. It's a yeah. milk duct." So thinking back, it's been there. I reckon it had been there quite a long time, but because um, this is another thing that happens to us, mainly women, we get very busy holding down jobs, looking after the children, yep. having husbands, all those things. So we might think we're checking, but we'll do it very quick. We're not gonna, we haven't got time laying on, or we think we haven't got time laying on the bed, stretching up arms at the end of the night, and checking, and checking all around, doing all this stuff. But we will do like, you know, sometimes the minimum check. That's why I believe that Breast Cancer Awareness Month is quite a good thing, because if you're not yeah. gonna do it, throughout the year, which is quite normal sometimes because of our lifestyles. At least a f some people will get the awareness through because it's, it's in your face quite a lot. Mm. So, um, so like events, mm -hmm. like what Demolo is doing, yes. is really good because it yeah. brings out that yeah. awareness. Definitely. What I find really interesting is mm. that I've done a show before on breast cancer. Mm. I had... Um, a guest who was a survivor of breast cancer and she came to speak about it and um, the reason why I decided to do this is I thought it's breast cancer month again I think we done that one last year September it's breast cancer uh, month again but it shows itself to people in different ways yeah. and what is interesting is that she only realized that she had a lump in her breast because her husband felt it she didn't even feel it and like you said she's like Mm. me a bit mm. you know she had never felt it before she didn't feel any pain so i you know i can really understand the importance mm. of people and where do be, people get this information of how they should check themselves properly is there somewhere where this information is it comes in it's in all different ways because with me because of my job a few years before i found the lump um i got the information from doing the training. No, but this is what I'm saying. You yeah, say, but I'm just thinking, where would that, others... You had that training, mm. but you still didn't find the lump. You found it by mistake, in spite yes. of the fact that you had that, yeah. that training. Yeah, and can I put something else in there? When I went to for the initial um, checks for the mammogram, yeah. don't forget, I was also under 50. I'm 50 now. But at the time, which was two years ago, I yeah. was 48. You don't get the letter for the mammogram. A lot of my f friends that I made 
through having the breast cancer at the hospital. Yeah. None of them were 50. I lost um, a girl that I went through the cancer with who was 34 and I finished yeah. my last chemo. She finished her last chemo and we buried her two weeks later leaving four children. Wow. She was 34 yeah. with four children. So you have lumps and bumps because you've got the milk coming in. Why are children going to be checking their breasts thinking they've got cancer? And it can spread so quick and then it goes yeah. through your body and you're finished. That's what, that's what kills kills yeah, us. Yeah, and I was going to get to that yeah. because then I want to say is, so you found the lump, you went to the hospital. Yeah, eventually. And well, not eventually. You didn't go straight to it? No, I did, but it was like, oh my gosh, what do I do here? Do I go to the doctor? Do I go to the nurse? Do I go to the hospital? And I went to bed and the hospital was gone in the morning, which it wasn't. Yeah. Went to the doctor, so then you go into this thing where they have to see you in 48 hours at the hospital. So you show yourself, once you show yourself in hospital, they're saying... At the doctor. Hospital. Once you go to the doctor, they were saying you to the Meant hospital... To. They meant to. And I got there and the hospital, this, this, the breast clinic was packed of women. I thought, what the heck is going on here? It was absolutely packed. There was nowhere to sit. But there's different days. that worked out that there's different days that they do different things. So there was a lot of... Different cultures have different ways of doing things. Different cultures will have their whole family there, the father. And, yeah. and you know, it's very yeah. noisy. There's yeah. loads of things going on. Um, I had the check, the first mammogram that I had, and I knew that I had the lump, they felt the lump. Yeah. The first mammogram that day said that I didn't have a lump there. So somebody might ask, what is a mammogram? Oh, a mammogram is like, I presume, the, the x-ray that you have to check your well, um, breast if there's enough. cancer and lumps or whatever it is. So, so they the first one you had? There on that day said that there was no lump but because it was here it didn't show up on the mammogram so then they says okay they've got um they've got another mammogram a 3d mammogram machine we'll do that we'll do an ultrasound isn't ultra that, scan isn't that isn't isn't that quite scary that you go for the first mammogram and you know you felt this lump and then they say nothing has shown up but yeah. you know what there's a lump there's there. A, there, there is a lump yeah. so you need to go further yeah so then they did the 3D one because yeah. King's College has got the money to have that machine. Yeah. So I had that. And then um, they did an ultrasound and then they took a biopsy. What's, what's a biopsy is biopsy? where um, they put a needle into the lump and, and clipped a bit off that. as a sample. Mm. And then they tell you, go home and wait two and a half weeks. And we'll let you know. Two and a half weeks. Yes. What? Do you mind if I ask you what were those two weeks like? Two and a half weeks? It wasn't very nice because you just imagine all sorts of things, but then you'll be, you'll have friends who support you and say, oh, don't worry. That's if you tell them though, isn't it? Yeah. I sort of told, yeah. I told a few people, I said, oh, don't worry, don't worry. When we get to this age, we get these cysts, we get this. Just don't worry, don't worry. So, yeah. But isn't that awful thing? I don't know, I haven't been through it, but I'm sitting here thinking, isn't it an awful thing having to go through your day-to-day -day work, knowing that you've gone for this test and you could have a result back, but then you're still expected to function the same? Yeah. Because you can't just go off work sick, can you? You can't say to the kids, you know what, I can't deal with you. It wasn't a very you nice You still time. have to go on with your everyday yeah. tasks that you usually mm -hmm. do. So then after two weeks? Um, I went back and um, I went on my own actually. Um, in the evening, and I always remember, I'm just going to fit this in about this, um, there was two children sitting in the waiting room. I thought, oh, okay, what's going on here? And I'm sitting there looking at these kids. And then this um, woman came out, must be with her mum and her sister, saying, yeah, yeah, everything's fine, I'm great. And everybody was all happy, and I was like, then I got a bit emotional, because I was thinking, oh my God, I was happy for them. Yeah. And I was and hoping... Thinking, what's my result going to yeah, be? Yeah, I'm hoping that my one's going to be the same. So they'd gone, yeah. and I've gone in, and then he said, oh, I hope you're okay, you're, you, you know, looking good, and blah, blah, bleep, and they, oh, we've looked at your thing, and blah, 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 blah. And, um, yes, it is cancer, and blah, blah, blah. So, Hold on a minute. how told it? That's how they said. Hold on a minute. What did you just say there? He says, um, oh yes, you have got cancer. And that, like, okay. Okay, right, he says, but nothing to worry about. Oh, it's quite small and blah, blah, bleep, and you'll be fine. 
So, and we'll cut that out. Part of me is sitting here thinking, what a horrible way to be told. But then at the same time, I'm mm. thinking, the doctor works there. They become quite yeah, sensitive. And it was 5.30 nearly. The end he of was the day. tired. He wanted to go you know home. I mean? was the beginning of the day for me, hearing that, but yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. So um, that was that. And I was like, oh my gosh. And they says, anyway, um, now what you need to do, just to make sure it hasn't spread to your brain, your liver, your kidneys and your bones, um, you need to have an MRI scan and you need to have the, the bone scan That's in, full in two weeks' time. You've got cancer, you've got cancer, but in two weeks' time... So it's like, obviously, for that two weeks, you think, oh my gosh, it's spread, I can feel it here, I can feel it there. So then you have to have those two, knowing that you've got the cancer, you have to have those two, and then you have to wait for three weeks to find out if it's spread through your body. Yes. This, uh, do you know what? This just sounds so traumatic. Because I'm just thinking, okay, you have two weeks where you have to wait to go for the um, mm. the exam. Then after you have that exam, you have to wait another three weeks to get the result. And you walk in and they say, yes, you do have it. But you still have to wait another two weeks for us to check whether it's gone through your body. So all that time. And... I don't know if it's like this, but I'm the type of person, I might be in a room and all of a sudden they say, oh, somebody's got lice. My hair's itching me like mm, mad. Yeah. So well, I, like, thought, I thought it was. So, yeah, so it, it felt like, like it was everywhere. So it felt like you I had cancer. I was Googling cancer. everything, like, oh, pain's in the back, oh, it's in my bones and all this stuff. So it wasn't nice, but you have to get on. When you've got your children, you've got to go to work, you've got, got to, to go do to your stuff. So it wasn't nice, and then you Google the stuff and say, oh, it's the worst part of having oh the cancer God. is the results and waiting for results. And it's it really, true. really was. Um, and then, so going back for those results was like, I uh, wasn't, you know, I was a bit scared about to go back. But then when I went in, she said straight away, the doctor said, oh, it hasn't, you haven't got it in your bones and you haven't got it in anywhere else. It's like, oh, thank goodness. Yeah. So then they had to take out the lump so what, and then did you investigate have to, the lump. Did you have an operation to take out the lump? Yeah, or? but it was just the lump because there's another thing what um, you don't know until you're in that situation, like with the cancers and that. Yeah. With breast cancer, there are hundreds of different types. That is it. There's it's not so, just you've got breast cancer, yeah. let's take your breasts off. There is so many different types. It could be the nipple part. It could, it, it could be that you've got some giant um, big lump of cancer there that's dug into your bone that's got to be oh. taken off you can have little tiny bits of it all, all over, over the place. there's some there's the hormonal versions there's the opposite to hormonal because my one's hormonal um there's all different kinds of and this is just breast cancer yeah when you think that every part of your body mm. can be infected yeah. by is infected the word no, can spread, be affected. Spread, affected. Yeah, affected. it can be affected, affected. by cancer. Yeah. and this is just even your eyelid, anywhere, anything. I know somebody um, that had it taken off their finger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know yeah. somebody they discovered yeah. cancer on her finger and yeah. they had to cut it out. Yeah, mm-hmm. my God. Yeah, so you know what? That. It sounds traumatic, and I'm not. Gonna, it sounds traumatic yeah, it and scary. But I'm here now. So. Well, do you know what? And this is the beautiful thing. And mm. I think also part of the reason of doing this show and also the reason for you mm. doing your event, Ramada, is to let people know the importance of going out, doing these checks at home, learning. I mean, we have to take a sense of responsibility, don't we? And we need to go and find out how to do these checks properly. We need to find out what it is we are looking for. Mm. And so we need to know that we need to go straight to the hospital, if anything. But part of the reason of doing this show is to make people aware yeah. that this is what happens. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so mm-hmm. you had the lump taken out. Yeah. What followed after? They that? investigate the lump, and they told me it was Wait, safe. Hold on <laughs> Are you, I'm, <laughs> so I just have to say hold on here because I'm like, hold on Yeah, it's an ongoing this saga. A, this now, we're talking about months. This is like a process it that is... It started in the January. January. This is coming up towards the middle of February now, I'd say. Mm. It started the beginning of January, isn't it? New Year's. Yeah. Mm. So now they've we're taken the lump out. Yeah. And they now have to go and investigate that lump. Yeah. All this time, are you on any medication? 
Um, no. no. What kind of medication? That's it, because they haven't they haven't finished their investigation, have they? No, 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 no. no, no. So you still got weeks of worrying and waiting. Yeah, so I, can't, I can't remember how much, how long I had to wait for the results of the bite of the lump Biopsy, being taken yeah. out. Mm. But once I think, remembering now, once they say that you're going to have the operation because you've got that, then they've also given me my regimen of chemo that I've got to have four and a half months chemo. Wait, and hold on, what is the chemo? What do you mean? What is chemo therapy? Chemo before before I'd had chemotherapy. I didn't know that it's a drip, that it's a toxic drip of poison that kills practically every cell in your body and regenerates it back. It burns out your veins. I had to, because my veins were very small, I had to have like a drip thing put into, through my arm, into my chest that I kept for four and a half months so they could just feed every three and a half weeks. I think it was three and a half weeks. They, um, Put the put the chemo through the the pick line. So they, they leave it, that injection. Leave it they in, leave that hanging out my arm. That leave there. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's because my chest. I've got um, a friend whose daughter, four years old, mm. has um, a, a tumor, a cancerous tumor, and she's going through um, chemo. Mm -hmm. And, and I saw, in. yeah, they had to yeah. put it under her arm, and then they yeah, put it. Because otherwise, what happens is it's so toxic, it can burn out. It burns out your veins, yeah. So you have that, and it um, makes all your hair fall out all over your body. I you remember really you saying eat. to me that you lost your nails. The nails, they were they was all septic Black. and stinking. I remember going on a on a seaside trip with the, with the church, and they were smelling. I used to have to keep them in the bag because they they just were exploding. All the toenails, everything just. Not everybody, you get different, different things everybody happen. Everybody gets different, different Yeah, because some of the people yeah. that I went, but then everybody's chemo is a little bit different as well, because depending. depending on the yeah. sort of the breast cancer you've got, because a lot of people, they, they have their breasts cut off. Oh. I didn't have to have yeah. that at that time, you know, but what I did have to have, when I got the results back, they said, oh, it, it's actually bigger than what we thought it was going to be. And it's got the potential to spread, oh, and um, they're going to have to take all the glands from underneath your armpit because it can spread to there. It's, it spreads there first, doesn't it? If it's yes, the and then that's yeah. where it goes. So when they looked at those, they said um, it spread there as well. So they had to take all the glands. So, I mean, I don't know what glands. Yeah. They put you to sleep and then... Yeah, but those, that is that fights the infection down that arm, so I'm now left with this thing called lymphedema. But that's quite nice, because I've seen people and their whole hand is big, and you can't... You, well, it's you're lucky because your hand does not look small. No, I mean, not that. Still yeah, it's got that puffy bit, but, but that's yeah. because you haven't got that water drainage anymore mm. from the armpit. But all that could have been kind of avoided if I'd found that lump a bit uh, earlier, because that, that lump is like um, uh, a bit like a, a beam. How big was and it? And then about like this size, but it's like it was, it's like, think of a bean and then it's like the bean will split and then the bean will get a shoot and then where, 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 yeah. it had split and oh. it started to shoot. Whereas you can have the shoot and then you get the branches and then you get And them, that's when it spreads. And then it's like spreading, so it had, yeah. it had come out of just being encased, yeah. which means, so how long had up. that been there? And you hadn't realised. And I hadn't realised And then all it there. took was you to brush yourself by mistake. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and it had been there long. So if I was doing those checks, I might have saved myself from being now on tamoxifen for five on. years. You were doing some checks. I was, but they but was kind of not really that great. Yeah. They weren't obviously that great. Wow. So then, after you had the um, chemo uh -huh. for what four and a half months, you said uh -huh. you lost your you lost a lot of your hair, nails. No, and not a lot. Of, every little piece. piece. Every, okay. I remember you saying that you lost no, your eyelash, no eyebrow, everything. no anything. Oh, okay, let's not go there. <laughs> 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 nothing. So nothing. So no. basically you got a free Brazilian. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> what do you mean, Gloria? You said it. <laughs> anyway, I tell you, you leave me into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But mm. at the end of the day, I'm so happy that it is something that you can laugh about. Yeah. You know, that is the greatest joy of it because yeah. I remember sitting with you just mm. after you had it mm. and you were you were perky, but there was still some fear at the back. Well, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, if yeah. I'm is that, no, no, this is what I'm saying. But that's it. But it's nice. To, it's lovely to see you. Yeah, yeah. And it's really changed your life in a it's sense. It's definitely changed my whole life, all my days. So you tell me. Don't well, yes, I, maybe this is you know. This is this is what it's all about. This is what it's all I, about. I, I picked up something here. Yeah. I picked up the fact that it seems like. Actually, we have to go find that information. Yes. That's not good enough, though, is it? It's not. It's mm, not. The information's not necessarily effective, because as I said, I did the training, but it's our busy lifestyle. It. It's things you, like you this. You even have to know that you have to check. Exactly, and it's not. Cause and the you reason have to know what to check. What to check, how yeah. to check. Yeah. So I know, I've read somewhere that I have to go, I, I should check my teeth three times a year. But I don't write. Exactly. Do you see exactly. what I'm saying? Yes, so I know yes. there in my subconscious that I should do that, but I don't. That's what we done, yeah. And I say bye-bye to the kids and their mum when they go off to the dentist. Mm -hmm. And he says to them to say hello to me. And I say them to Well. No, but well, come off it. <laughs> you know, you went clubbing the night before, didn't you? Yeah, of course, man. Yeah, yeah. Sort of. Yeah. So life, life, <laughs> life goes on before, after, and during. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. I, I think that there is something around so it's more than aware this is awareness again isn't it that let us put it in people's faces to say do you know what you if if, if we if, if you're if you're a woman and a man and a man and we say top three illnesses one of them you've got to be thinking cancer and yes. if you're a woman because of the stats you've yeah. got to be thinking breast cancer and as a man you've got you've to be thinking, thinking prostate, prostate, cancer. Cancer. prostate cancer and, and breast cancer. Diabetes. cancer as well and diabetes. if and diabetes, diabetes that's the well that's, you know that's the series. so yeah. you see what and i'm saying the blood pressures and, and we know about that and all that as well I'm, 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 so I'm not sure i'm thinking to myself why is diabetes so out there Diets and stress, the, the life. No, no, but as in, why, why, why do, it's in our face. Yeah, and we know about oh, it. It's in our face. It. Yeah. It's in our face. Yeah. Breast okay. cancer is But not breast in our cancer, face. to tell you the honest truth, sitting down here thinking, it's because it's on adverts that you hear about it mm -hmm. mainly. Mm -hmm. Because you have, um, what is it, cancer research. Mm -hmm. And, and these the guys, other breakthrough breast cancer. Breakthrough breast cancer, breast cancer always right. ask, always. And I don't know, part of me is thinking, maybe they need to change their adverts a bit. And yeah, you get also used to add it, a bit of, because you, that's it. Mm -hmm. And maybe add a little information. Or maybe some of the money that they're collecting, maybe they need to do short documentaries. Mm -hmm. and Question then, do you get l periodic letters from your doctors? No. you to check. T no. Now that I'll needs to happen because no. I know you get it for cervical. You get it for oh, for right. having yeah. smear. Yeah, you, you mm -hmm. have it. You get it for you know when you have your smear test. Mm -hmm. you get, um, yes, every three years. A letter years, every three it? years. Yeah. You get a letter saying hello. Can you come for your smear, yeah. please? But this is the thing. You have to. You, you're fifty and you get that letter. This no, is I, exactly. You're half dead. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's when you hit fifty that you get. A when letter. you hit fifty, I was forty-eight. So I wasn't but then getting a letter. But this is a sad thing because I know about three people that died of it. Under 50? Yeah, yeah breast of course. Cancer, all the people I know. No, no. Most of the people I know. Most. Were in their 30s. Exactly. And I know one person, the mums of one of them, mm -hmm. yeah. who was in her 60s. Right. Do you know what? One thing that I have found interesting and... Um, I don't know how I'm going to put this. Let me put it. There's something about people of the Western world. And I think Angelina Jolene was one of the first high priority people that done it. She discovered that the cancer gene was in her family and she went for mm. the, double. what do they call it? Double mastectomy. Double yeah. mastectomy. And Sharon did and that, didn't she? And Sharon, Sharon no. Stone. No, not Stone. Sharon Ozzy. Osborne. Mm -hmm. Sharon Osborne. Yeah, so. Mm. And you know, they decided to go and investigate because they knew mm. somebody had the, in their family. Because I think one thing um, about breast cancer is that if it's in your family, there is a like then there's a high risk mm -hmm. of you getting it. Yeah. But also, even if it's not in your family, there's still a possibility. You know, it's yeah, really no. scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for me, I've seen um, these Western ladies go out, look for it, and say, you know what? 
take my breast off if that will keep me alive. And um, I remember on TV, I saw a girl, 23. She had it done because she knew that the risk of her getting mm. breast cancer was quite high. Mm. I can't see. Oh, you can. Women. I tell you something. Or even if they do it, I can't see them sharing that information. Sharing is a different thing. You know, because I think you know what that our the power share. of awareness sometimes is sharing information. Mm -hmm. Because it's so easy for us to hear something and brush it under the carpet and say, mm -hmm. it's not going to be me. Mm -hmm. But the power of shame, when people tell you about your experience, and a lot of um, people hear the word cancer, and the next thing they see is death. Mm -hmm. yeah. They don't like see pneumonia. Yeah. Like back in the day, I used to think pneumonia. Once you, you've got pneumonia, you're yes. dead. There's so many different pneumonias. You can have pneumonia and go to work. Yeah. I got on a plane with pneumonia because it's just the, where the part where of the lung, yeah. where the infection is, but there are different strains. Mm. So, that so is it's it. a bit um, like that. I just think when it comes to something like um, cancer, mm. there's so many different types of cancer yeah. that, you know, the information needs to be stronger. And I'm hoping that there's going to be a whole lot more organisations. Like, you know, come on, Finn. the um, the Champions Club, mm -hmm. you guys are doing a brilliant hope from the event you do, also watching this show, mm -hmm. that they will, people will start thinking of, because one thing as Africans we don't do, a lot of stuff is charity. Yeah. And I think more needs to be done. It's, and I guess this is where this whole thing's come from. So, we do have charitable hearts. Yeah. We, we, we're very sympathetic and empathic, empathetic, if that's yeah. the word. So we're good. We, we've got good hearts. Yeah. But it's the way. So here, charity is, uh, to get people to do charity, you run a marathon. You're not going to get people from my village to run a marathon. Yeah. So you can move that. Some other people are going to put a funny thing on their nose. You're not going to get anyone from my village to put anything on their nose. I know. What is that about? It's just difference in culture. So we sat down and thought to ourselves, what do we do? Yeah. Because people, you, see, you can you see, three of us have sat down here, yeah. we've picked up different things, I've learnt a few things, yeah. you've learnt a few things, yeah. and we're, we're going to leave here, and if we didn't have anyone to share this with, that would be the end of it. So we thought to ourselves, what do we do? And we thought, you know what, it's the African community, we're going to have a party. Because the African community always love a good party. party. And so we'll have, down, yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll have, we'll have, <laughs> so plan is five, six hundred people under one roof. Yeah. Breakthrough breast cancer is there. Yeah. The leaflets are there. Mm. The information is there. They're going to speak to us. We're going to hear from survivors as well. Yeah. Um, and we're going to hear from people who were affected by those who didn't make it. Have you got any space for someone like Gloria on your program? It, you would not believe how, and I was shocked. No, you would not yes believe. No. Do you have any space? Oh, it's oh, there isn't because it's overwhelming. There are queues of people so, who no, are no. so willing uh, to share say, this. And he's not saying that in a horrible way. So oh, no, I don't no, want Gloria. No, no, it's no. because there are so many. Mm. And I and I said there. I was shocked because you know how it is with us. We're very private. We don't mm. discuss mm. some certain mm. health. Yeah. Every in my country, everyone died of a brief illness. Excuse me, please. In our country. Oh, so right. I don't know where you're Gloria from. Gloria is from your country. Oh, so and so country. am I. <laughs> <laughs> so, everyone dies of a brief illness. Yeah. What illness? Well, what is this knows? brief illness thing, you know? So, uh, we But you know what? Saying that, Demola, I remember living in Nigeria. Let's say I was in Nigeria for about nine years. One thing I hardly ever heard about was cancer. Back in the I day, hardly though, yeah. ever heard about cancer, but I'm sure people were dying of oh, it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so there are two things there. One is one of the reasons we're doing this is we actually now, I, and we, along with my friends and colleagues, have realized actually that that £10 or £5 that you give to any kind of genuine organization that's doing yeah. research <coughs> makes a world of difference because I knew two people three actually, that died of breast cancer about 15 years ago, and was shop, it was short and sharp. Picked it up, of course it was too late by the time he picked it up, so yeah. the message of early detection, forget Very about scary. that. And that's it, they died. Mom, daughter, that's it. Now, and back then, any time I heard anyone had, it was a death sentence, like you said. Yeah. Today, it's different. 
Lots okay. of people survive. Yeah. And I was asking, so what's happened? What has happened is that yeah. all the money that we've been given yeah. has actually been put to good yeah. use. It's true. Mm -hmm. There is no cure. This is what amazes me. There is no cure, well, but there is, is a management well, plan in place. A cure is. There is a. That's it. It depends on when. There's a cure if they catch it early, yeah. isn't it? But well, you know what? A real. But, well, I don't know if it's a cure. Well, like, you can't well, prevent it. So, it's not so, so, so cure, cure, you can't prevent it because oh, right. you don't even know. Actually, it's even it. worse than that. You don't know what causes it. Well, this is it. And what I wanted mm. to say is that what people need to understand about the importance of they, giving mm. is that. Because a lot of people will say, well, I never see where this money goes. Ooh. This money goes into research mm -hmm. because they have not found a cure for cancer. They have not discovered what is the real cause of cancer or how to eradicate that real cause of mm -hmm. cancer. And so all this money they're saving is not just going into a black hole. Oh, no. People need to know that... It is to save lives, and it could be yours, mine, mm -hmm. a closest person to yep. use life that, it, that they're saving. So if you have, it is good to give. To give, yeah. And, and to be fair, we've had, you know, really good responses from people. Yeah. Because um, I was kind of thinking, oh, this is going to be a difficult uphill task, you know, yeah. knowing my people. But um, no, it's not been like that. We've had support. People have really commended us on what we're doing. And you're right. It's research that is the power. Here's the thing to think about. So you've got God knows how many types of cancers. Yeah. Well, we can't expect the government to give each of them 100 million every year. No. Otherwise Money's not there. Otherwise, there'll be, no, there be no country anymore. Yeah. And there's other illnesses other, that they yeah. need to focus on. And other well. things. Um, well, we need to live, eat, drink, yeah. be mm -hmm. kids need Services to be educated. Need there's to be so many other stuff. So the, the government, so if we're thinking, because in our minds, we think, oh, the NHS is doing a lot of stuff. They are doing great stuff, but the they NHS don't have that money. Stretched. They don't have that money. And, you know, of course, we don't pay for the NHS. So we ought to, we ought to start to think about that as well, that maybe, maybe, maybe Maybe, you know, we need to, maybe then it should be a research pot yeah. that people need to put money into voluntarily every month. Do you know what? And as the three of us are sitting here, the three of us are from Nigeria, what is the awareness campaign around something like breast cancer like in Nigeria? It's right better than it used to be. Yeah. Okay. So that's, so, so, so that's the good news. It's better than the, yeah, and even right, here. So we have a call. Hi, good evening. Hi. Hello, good evening. Hi, Ayo. How are you doing, Susie? Hi, Ayo. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. Really good show. Really, really good show. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you. Really good show. Um, what I wanted to ask, though, um, sorry, was Glory. Gloria. Yeah, Gloria. Gloria, thank you so much for sharing your story. You're welcome, um, darling. Definitely something that we need to, especially within the community, we need to hear more about. Definitely. But one of the things that interested me was you said that you had been checking, you had been doing the self-exam for years or for a long time. I thought I had. You been doing it incorrectly. So could you just explain how people can find out the best way to do a proper self-exam so that people, you know, are checked properly and not just fumbling with their, with their breath. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what I would say is to check in with our breast cancer care. Breast, ca breast cancer care UK. Can you hear me? Okay. It was a bit crackly. I can hear you now. Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You can um Google if you want to Google it. I don't know. There's other search engines. Um. Breast cancer care UK. Or um the Macmillan, and you can get your correct information from there. I'll tell you why, because even though I learnt that, which was quite a long time ago, um, I, I don't necessarily do it, necessarily do it in the way that they tell you to do it. Do you know what I mean? Because I can feel my breast now in all different ways, but they have a procedure of maybe putting your arm up, um, going underneath your armpit, going all around your chest bone and those sort of things which realistically you can't always do all the time do you know what I mean but um, to get the correct way of um, being able to do it I suggest you go to those um, those websites which is Breast Cancer Care UK or the Macmillan UK and then that will lead you 
to um, get in the correct way of, um, you know, being able to examine yeah. yourself. Okay, well, thanks for that. That's so, was there, there was something I wanted to ask also about, from your experience, how the whole process, I know you've got children. Yeah. Um, the effect it had on your kids, seeing their mum go through the process and going uh, through the, the whole procedure. What did you tell them? Well, first of all, how old were they? What did um, you tell them and how did they deal with it? At the time, my son was um, eight and my daughter was nearly 12. She's just starting, she just was in her first year of secondary school. Um, I sort of made up a, a bit of a different story for both of them. Like when I was, you know, um, finding out about, when I knew that I had it, I was pretending I was still finding out because I couldn't deal with it and telling the children. Um, yeah. My son, who was younger, he, was, he wasn't so bad about it because he didn't really understand. My daughter found the whole thing upsetting and embarrassing at the same time. She didn't want me to tell anybody. She didn't want her, f her new friends at school to know. And they were coming every morning to the house and I was in the middle of chemo where I couldn't get an infection. And um, her friends were coughing in the sitting room. So I'd be walking around with a mask saying, get them out, get them out, you know, and, but I couldn't, my daughter didn't want me to tell, um, let anybody know because the stage where she was at, she was kind of embarrassed. Yeah, yeah. She never saw my bald head. She just didn't yeah. want to see it. She never, ever saw it. It was quite difficult for her. And plus her school, they do a lot for breast cancer because the head teacher's um, daughter actually died of it. They do breast cancer balls and lots of things, you know, lots of fundraising. And my daughter didn't want me to do anything about it. She didn't want me to get involved or get to take part. And I was like, well, I want to, that would help me. But um, yeah, she, she took it that way. But now because I'm fine, we're all kind of fine. Yeah. Mm. And, and have you, uh, does she do her own exams now then as well? No. Mm. This is the thing. It's quite, it's quite confusing. I mean, I'm, I'm still in the learning process myself. Like, should my daughter be worried at 14? Are, to, are children meant to be checking theirself? I'm, I'm quite confused about because there's no one really to get these answers from, even for me who's actually been through it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think it's down to kind of <coughs> the individual. You can ask your GP, but it depends how, what kind of GP you've got. Yeah. You yeah. can ask, you can go to the hospital and ask them in the breast clinic. It depends on the relationship and the character of the nurse or the doctor. Of the nurse or the doctor. It's not so straight cut like, you know, when you've been diagnosed and you, 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 you look and say, oh, you're going to have a personal nurse to look after you all the way through it. it it's not like how they say in the book. Yeah. You're pretty yeah. much on your own out there. You know, really, it's down to your friends and your family network to, to really get you through that sort of stuff. Well, thank you so much. Thank you You're so welcome. Much for sharing. So, and I just wanted to say, well, you mentioned how old you are, and I was going to be like, are you sure? Because <coughs> you do not look your age. Oh. So, I mean, it's, it's you know... Um, I know that some people can go the totally other way and then age, you know, the whole thing ages them, no, but you're totally... I've like gone you. crazy, <laughs> love, now. Because I've the one life to live, so, I'm, you know, yeah. Then you oh, live it. Thank you so much, Ayo. Thank, thank you. Ben. Thank you. All right, then, great show. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Thanks, Ben. All bye. Right, bye. Bye. Do you know what? From while you were having that conversation, I was thinking, and to me, it sounds like that this has become, it's something that is too big mm -hmm. for the NHS and, the, you know, still these charities out there to handle mm -hmm. because there's so many different parts. And from listening to what um, Gloria said, it sounds like there needs to be an organisation out there for support because We're although, and it. hopefully, yeah, mm -hmm. and although support might seem a minor thing, but it's interesting to hear what you had to say about your daughter not wanting you yeah. to tell anyone. So yeah. all of a sudden you're having to hold it yeah. in. You having to tell your son something else. Mm. But then you're going through the treatment. Mm -hmm. You're going through the thoughts oh, in your head. I remember something. What happened was I did 
um, get onto the breast cancer care people about that because I said there's no literature, there's nothing for me to help my children with. And at the time I was thinking, oh, maybe I could write books about it and stuff like that. But then what happened was because it's they've got a subsection for younger breast cancer women. Yeah. So within that, they do these books for mums who's got children. But because I'm not in that age group, they you don't get that information. I wouldn't have got that information. But because I'm a mum, but my, you know, an older yeah. mum. Um, so they just make the assumption. I, because are... of my kind of job, I research things. I have to help other people. Like but that is another thing that I wanted to say. Lots because of assumptions. That's it. A lot of assumptions because Gloria yes. works within the care um, industry. Yeah. So did. Sorry. I gave it Dude, all out. Sorry, I'm, I'm, you know what, just before we go, I'm gonna, I wanted to add that, that, yeah. you know, in case people go through this same incident, mm -hmm. it's never ever the end. Mm. Because there's also the fear of, will it come back? Mm. Have you had the all clear, or you have to go through no. a few years of having the all clear, mm. don't you? Well, I'm on tamoxifen now for five years, which What's is meant that? to try. Tamoxifen is, is um, a drug that, tries to keep the cancer from coming back because I've got the hormonal one. So I, yeah. every day I have to have a tablet for five years. I'm two years in with that. Um, give thanks for that because other countries you can't get it or other parts of England, it's like a postcode thing. Sometimes you can't get it. It's very, very expensive. Not everybody can get this tamoxifen. Not everybody could have got the chemo and not everybody could have got the radiotherapy that I got depending on where, where you live, live and things like that. So I'll give thanks for that. Above, you know, yeah. but um, but you still have to take this medication for yes. five years, and it's after five years yes. you get the all clear. So that no, I don't believe don't there's no. All clear. I don't know. Am I someone who's in remission now? Because they say about oh, they're in remission. No one actually. The doctor doesn't say okay. You, your your test was clear this year. You're in remission. I presume it's called remission. This year, I phoned the, the, the hospital a couple of weeks ago, and I said. Hi, what am I meant to do? Because I thought maybe, because they say I'm meant to get a check every year. And I had my check last year, I've gone through this year. And I said, oh, am I meant to um, um, make an appointment or etc. etc." They sent me an appointment. They said, oh, we're phoning later on, which they didn't. But they sent me an appointment. Wow. When I got the letter, it was for the next day. I couldn't go. I keep forgetting, not forgetting. I've got to find You've the time so much to, to get do. back yeah. to them to make another appointment to go and have this year's check to see if I can. So it's not routine? It's not routine. As in, they don't send it out to you Well, I thought, I presume that they were going to, but I phoned them and then I got the letter to say that I've got the thing. You have to keep up on it. So you have to, that's another important yeah. thing. Right. And then I've missed the thing, but I need to go there and then I might get a little bit scared. But what I learned at the time, um, to be able to deal with it, to be able to deal with it was, don't worry about anything because worry is a sin. You take your worry and you give them to God. And get I walked, with it. I Amen. walked free through the whole thing because I give my worries to God. God knows best. Yeah. And now, at the end of it all, I prefer me as I am now. So I give thanks. So you think you learnt a lot I from learnt. it? I learnt. Oh my gosh. How I was before the cancer and how I am now, I'll take me now any day. Wow. Yeah. So something positive did come Yes, out of it. yeah, because you, you know, once you've lost all your hair, because there's people that say, oh no, if it's my breasts or my hair, my, my breasts have to go, I'm not losing my hair. Yeah. I lost the whole of my hair and all them things. Don't really worry about it now. Yeah. You know, I don't, you know, things that I used to worry about, I don't really worry about anymore. Because you know how, mm, so much. Do you know, and you know, one of the things I wanted to say, we've only got three minutes to go. Okay. I tell you, it does. I did tell you that. I know, we're going to talk about it in an <laughs> one hour. One more here, Gloria's like, I haven't even How started. Do do I said, Gloria, <laughs> no, you're going to be surprised. <laughs> no, no, but one thing I want to say mm. is that, and because I want to end it all on a positive note, yeah. is that, and you've kind of delved into it. Yeah. Before Gloria um, discovered that she had cancer, you were living. Just live it. You know, yeah, the housewife, kids, children, housewife, stressed out, job, you know. And I'll drink you up and you're like, oh, no, I, I can't really talk. Yeah, I can't really talk now. I need I to pick up doing a pack lunch. Serious. Yeah. I haven't been out for years. And then all of a sudden she gets the all clear. 
Goodbye, job. I'm going back to Well, I give up the job on 31st of, 31st of July. Yeah, you would have. July. Uh? Yeah, I give up all the care work. Yeah. And I'm now a DJ and promoter. <laughs> Cooking. <laughs> yeah. She cooks. Catering. She does catering. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll take so, some of my wares in a minute. Yeah, she's got some here for us. Yes, <laughs> I do fish on a Friday. You know, so yeah, I think also it's very important for people to hear that when you go through um, such situations, there is an importance that you find a way to stay positive because yeah, staying positive key, also helps you to heal better. Yeah, because adding, you know, look on the bright side. Mm -hmm. I think Gloria is proof and evidence Absolutely. that looking Absolutely. on the bright side Absolutely. helps. Absolutely. I mean, you, go on, Wallace. I was going to say it's been um, it's been awesome sitting down here listening oh. to you. Remember, we spent months organising this. Right. We haven't actually. I've spoken to survivors, but okay. just to invite them. Right. But I've, we haven't. I'm not sat down with somebody okay. yeah. for an hour to talk oh. about this. Oh. And you know, this kind of just brings to home exactly what it is I'm trying to say. Yeah. There is stuff out there that people need to know. A lot. Oh, yeah, definitely. People a need lot. to know. Yeah. Come to the event, 20th of September. Yeah, um, be part of it. Be Oasis part. Banqueting Hall in Barking. It's yeah. big enough for everyone. So Massive. come to the event. They'll be there. Breakthrough Breast Cancer. And lots of wonderful people like Gloria. There are other things we haven't talked about. How did your husband cope? Don't do you know answer what? that question. We're going to have to do all that. That's well, another we've show. Only got, we're going to have to do it. Do you know what? I always end every show with like, we're going to have to do another show. Yeah. As soon as we get to the end, Somebody wants to ask more questions. Oh, that's, 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 that's another show. And that's what I said to you. An hour flies. Because you know what happens? We crumble completely. But you yeah. don't expect us to crumble, do you? Crumble? Oh, oh, crumble oh, as in fall apart. Um, we just crumble. We, because oh, yeah. mm. because we're used to... Can we not go there, please? Exactly. It's meant to be ending on a, <laughs> <laughs> on a good note. Because please. It. No, not really. Behave yourself. I'll tell you, she's... <laughs> Guys, we... Sorry, our hour is up. Uh, and uh, I, it's you been know a pleasure. what? I want to say a big thank you to the Mola. Mm -hmm. 20th. Yeah. Come out there, Money. it's all for charity. Don't the pink and white. Gloria, thank you so You're much for welcome. sharing your experience. I'm more really, than welcome. really grateful, and guys. Remember, everybody, check those breasts. Do it however you can before you even get to know the proper procedure. You know, you just need them, feel them, get someone else to feel them. And I wish you all the best. But one in four women get cancer. You'll get the breast cancer. Scary. So let's pick it up early. Yeah. Yeah. Let's pick so it up the early. Early, early, early detection the is the key. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much. I'll touch your mind too. And yeah. Too. Demola, you will. You're a man. Guys, thank you so much. What an awesome show. Good night and thank you. See you next week.